Hey everybody, Chef Britt here with ATBBQ.com and today we're going to be making dessert and it's going to be coconut panna cotta with grilled pineapple compote. So panna cotta is basically like a pudding, it's set with gelatin, there are no eggs, it's very creamy and supple and it's the perfect complement to this charred or grilled pineapple compote. We're gonna bring a lot of Caribbean flavors with some rum and some cinnamon and vanilla, and it all just works really well and caps off almost any meal that you've prepared on the grill perfectly. Now, this is a dessert that I prepared for cooking classes earlier in the year before they went on a sort of hiatus due to COVID. Um, but this dessert was a smashing success and you guys were very receptive to the banana pudding recipe, so I wanted to bring you more desserts to the channel. So let me show you how we do it. So just to show you how I've got things set up, I've got two cups of heavy cream, nice and cold in this large pitcher. I'll get to that later. Um, I've also got one packet of unflavored gelatin, three tablespoons of ice cold water. I have about six ounces of cane sugar, a can of coconut milk, and a little vanilla. So first things first, we need to get the gelatin bloomed. I'm just going to sprinkle it over the top and get it evenly dispersed. This granulated powder will absorb all of the moisture and become gelled. And we'll add it to our hot cream mixture when we're there. So to my six ounces of sugar, I'm going to add this coconut milk which during storage has separated, but that's okay. We're going to reconstitute it over some heat. So I'm not too worried about it if it's gotten separated over time. And I'm also gonna add just a little bit of vanilla extract. Vanilla bean paste also works really well here, as well as uh, vanilla bean seed, but this is just what I have on hand. So today we're gonna be doing all of our cooking on the Napoleon P500 gas grill. Now, to get ahead on the panna cotta so it has plenty of time to chill in the fridge, we're gonna go ahead and do all of our cooking on the side burner. So I've got this thing glowing red hot, but I'm actually gonna be cooking on a very low heat. I don't want to bring this mixture to a boil. I wanna bring it just underneath a simmer. So I'm gonna lower the heat just a little bit. So what I'm looking to do is melt the coconut fat. I'm also looking to dissolve the sugar um, again, we don't want to bring this to a boil, but we do want to get it hot. So as soon as we start seeing some steam sort of release from the top, and we'll show you that, we'll pull it off and add our other ingredients. So everything is dissolved. It's getting hot. I'll know it's hot once I really see steam coming off the top, which it's starting to, and also you might even see some bubbles sort of forming around the edge. If it starts to bubble hot, hot though, we might have to actually just let it cool before we incorporate our other ingredients. So now that we've got this hot mixture, I'm gonna go ahead and add my bloom gelatin and melt that in. Now what we're doing is we're starting to create this emulsion. If this mixture is really hot, you know, it will melt the gelatin just fine, but it will break the emulsion of our heavy cream that we'll add afterwards. And one thing to note too is I'm using a spatula. You can also use a wooden um, spoon if you want, but I would avoid using a whisk because we're trying to avoid getting air pockets or air bubbles in our panna cotta. We want it to just be smooth and supple all the way through. So I'm just using gentle stirs to incorporate everything. All right, so I've got my cold heavy cream. I'm going to just pour this right in to my pitcher. Now I've got it in a pitcher because it makes it a lot easier to transfer it into my containers. So just keep that in mind while you're mixing all of these ingredients together in their proper order that you end up in something that's gonna make it easy to pour out of later. So now we have this perfectly blended panna cotta mixture. And it's the perfect temperature. It's sort of lukewarm right now. So let's get it in our containers. So now we're just gonna fill up our containers. We're gonna try and just evenly disperse these. You can put this in glasses, you can put it in bowls. It's 
kind of whatever you prefer to eat out of. Just keep in mind that you want enough sort of surface area to dig a spoon in there. And notice I don't really have any significant air bubbles, no foam that's just sitting at the top. And that's just gonna give us a really beautiful, elegant presentation. All right, off to the fridge. All right, and now for the grilled pineapple compote. Now this is something that you can also get ahead on, but I actually prefer to make it closer to when I'm actually gonna serve it because I love that uh, temperature contrast between the cool, chilled panna cotta and a nice warm compote. So to get that going, I'm gonna go ahead and get a bed of charcoal going on the charcoal basket insert on the Napoleon. And then I'm just gonna move these grates over. So I'm gonna go ahead and close the grill while those heat up. Once they're white hot, they'll be ready to char up our pineapple. Now I love using charcoal for this compote. It gives an extra dimension of flavor. So that's why I'm using the charcoal basket on the Napoleon today. This is a perfectly ripe pineapple. And I really just prefer using a serrated knife for this job. So I'm gonna just go around the edges and sort of saw off. Now, we're trying to avoid these eyes. Um, that is where seeds kind of linger. So we're gonna try and cut just past those to get a more clean exposure. And try and cut off all of the eyes. So for this, I'm going to just Keep in mind the core right here and kind of cut around that. So I'm just gonna go straight down. On each side. And then I'm going to get that core out of these smaller wedges. So one thing to note, I also love the flavor of fresh pineapple. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually gonna keep half of this fresh and I'm gonna really just get an intense char on the other half. So let me show you how we're gonna cube it up in the end, but I'm gonna go ahead and maintain these bigger pieces for the grill. So you can kind of dice this up however you like, whatever size you prefer. I'm gonna go just a little smaller this is kind of more considered a large dice in the culinary world, but I really like that texture, that size. So I don't want to go too small, but I also just don't want it to be clunky and too big. I'm going to be really careful, sort of slice through the top there, and then I'm just going to continue sort of just making those long rectangular shapes. Slippery little devil. Okay, so we'll get this into our little saucepan here. Oops. We're gonna get a couple cups of cane sugar. So you can do this with brown or white sugar if you prefer. I'm kind of keeping with the Caribbean theme, so we're gonna continue with uh, pure cane sugar. I'm also gonna add a couple cans of pineapple juice. I've got some vanilla beans that were already scraped out, but they still have a ton of flavor. So I'm gonna go ahead and just add those in. And then, I'm gonna do a whole cinnamon stick and a cup of your favorite spiced rum. Looks like we're ready to roll. Let's get the pineapple on there and get some nice charred grill marks. Oh yeah. Pineapple is so intensely juicy. I'm not really worried about getting too much blackening, if you will, on the outside. So 
So with these nice heat resistant nitriles, I'm going to cut this up and add it to our compote mixture. We'll do the same thing that we did before. We're just slicing these longer pieces. Look at how beautiful and vibrant that is. Oh, I'm so excited. So all of these sort of charred bits are gonna turn into this really caramelized flavor throughout the whole compote. All right, now I think we're ready to go back to the Napoleon. We're gonna use the side burner. So I've got it rolling on really high heat. I'm gonna get everything mingling. Now what's nice is the pineapple is very fibrous, so it can withstand quite a bit of cooking. So we're just gonna cook this down until our desired sort of consistency and texture. So you wanna cook this down for about 15, 20 minutes until it really starts to sort of reduce a little bit and the pineapple takes on a slightly darker color, maybe even more translucent. Just a little bit longer. All right, so I can tell we're pretty much there. Um, the bubbles themselves, even though I'm still on high heat, the bubbles have slowed down a little bit. So that tells me that they've thickened up and reduced. So I think we're ready just to pull it. So we can see the pineapple is really deepened in color. I'm gonna cool this just a little bit, but keep it warm so I can enjoy it with my panna cotta. But you could even just let this sit in the fridge overnight and all of the flavors in there will just mingle and get really comfortable with each other and it kind of just goes to another level. So it's up to you where and how you want to consume the pineapple compote. So now we're ready to plate. These have had some time to chill, about four hours. I'm just going to put a little bit of this compote, just slightly warmed, right on top. If you want, you can add a little syrup. It's right there. Perfect. I love the contrast in colors. It smells incredible. That rum is just singing all over this. Okay. So I'm gonna get just a little bit of this panna cotta. You can kind of see it's got a nice little jiggle in there. God. I've eaten this probably like a couple dozen times now and I never get tired of it. The panna cotta, super creamy yet really light. It's not heavy at all. And the sweetness and the, all of the flavors, the cinnamon, the rum of the pineapple compote and sort of the textural sort of crunch you get out of the Pineapple, man, guys, what's there, what more is there to say? Well, thanks so much for joining me today while we make dessert on the grill. It's nice to do that every now and then, so let us know if you enjoy that down in the comments. Feel free to subscribe if you haven't already, and if you need any of the tools or grills that we use today, check out atbbq.com. All Things Barbecue, where barbecue legends are made.